how was it pitched to you? Did somebody, just, the director, um, just come up and say, "Hey, we want you," or he actually, the director actually emailed me, um, and uh, James did, um, and said, "Hey, I'm a big wrestling fan. Uh, I just discovered indie wrestling. I think it's amazing. Uh, we want to film something. We want to do something with like indie wrestling because they're on TV. They're on TV. Um, and so they were like." We want this documentary. It's like it won't be. We'll just shadow you around. You won't even know we're there. You won't have to pay for any of our travel. You won't have to pay, pay us at all. We want to do this. Uh, and I was like, yeah, it's easy. I mean, it's just gonna be me, and you guys are gonna follow me around. So um, the pitch was good. I mean, it sounded it sounded good. I mean, of course, with everything, you're like, okay, whatever. But when it started going, it was good. Uh, you mentioned Bill Demott in the documentary. You know, nine out of ten. Like, did you ever get an answer why, or did you ever pursue um, one? I just I heard some like. N- nothing official, but I heard some uh, people would say like he was very protective of the guys he trained, and if an outsider came in and did better or looked better, then the, then the office would be mad at him. Like, why aren't your guys as good as this guy? Just came from the outside. So he tried to manipulate it for his guys to, to be better because he was uh, insecure about his job. Jay, what do you um, hope that? wrestling fans learned about indie wrestling through this documentary and what did you learn about yourself during this documentary um you know i i mean i just I, to me it's the story's boring it's just me you know it's just um but everyone seems to be connecting to it and everybody seems to be enjoying it um i showed it to my parents and even my mom said like because i never really talk about work to my parents she said i just learned more about you in an hour than i've known than you've told me in years you know so like I feel like people are getting to know me more than just what the, the viral clips they see, which is cool. You know, it's very cool that people feel like maybe they know me a little better. Another thing you touched on was the influence of DDT, DDT Pro, yeah. and how censorship's a little different here than over there. Do you feel like you see them influencing the American wrestling product more in the future? I mean. Um, they came over here during WrestleMania weekend and had a show of their own. Um, that was well received. Uh, and then they had a, a match at the Joey Ryan Penis Party uh, for the Iron Man title. Uh, they did a lot of their antics. And good or bad, uh, it was probably the most talked about thing. You know, whether people were positive or negative about it, it was probably the most talked about match on the show. So, um, it, it reaches people, you know. And, and, and the, the good thing about the divide is now people will, there'll be discussions. And, Debates and arguments over, and they'll just keep people talking about it. One, one of the kind of ob- obvious, if you want to put it that way, is WWE the 24 7 title. Almost immediately, people were like, okay, it's the hardcore title without hardcore, or hey, they were watching DDT Pro. Kind of like things that way and see it being influenced on a not so obvious level, and maybe like. Well, I mean, the D- but the Iron Man title was uh, kind of a parody of the hardcore title. Anyways, they just never stopped using it. You know, so that's why it's been a championship for 20, almost 20 years, and it's had 3,000 champions. It's because they just they never they never went away with it once they brought it in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think like I definitely for, when, I, when they had me win it and bring it to America, and then I did stuff like Scott Hall and Rey Mysterio and the Young Bucks winning it. Um, you know, it, it helps a lot of hype for me. Um, so I can see where they would say, like, maybe they can use the hype of their, their own guys and get their own guys over. Um, for sure, it's, it's definitely a tool. It's, it's very social media friendly. You said uh, that you don't want to work for WWE anymore in the documentary. Uh, where do you see yourself in wrestling in the next five years? Um, you know what? I, I, I might just stay independent. You know, I was in a Lucha Underground contract that wasn't favorable, and I just got out. I'm not really looking to get into another contract. Um, but I, the way I look at independent wrestling is that, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of work out there. And, I, you know, I've told, told people these too that I put like, oh, can you give me contacts to Cody or the Bucks because I want to try to get AEW. And I said, well, I can, but don't be in a rush to it. Don't sign anything you don't, you can't, you don't want to, you know, you're not fully happy with because um, when, they, when they go exclusive, there's going to be a lot of work on independence especially for girls, because, you know, the girls, they, they sign a lot of the top girls. Uh, so, uh, I just feel like there's going to be a whole lot more work on the independence in the next five years with these exclusive deals going around. So, 
I might just grind that out because I mean, it's friendly to my style. And um, you know, I, I can excel at that. One of the other things you touched on in the documentary was giving talent a place to work without you know, them having to go to a super indie or worry about getting signed. Starting bar wrestling, does it make it any harder for you to work with talent when you know that there's going to be such a cycle of talent where you can almost compare it to like college basketball going to the pros, like where it's almost like a one and done where talent gets hot. Maybe not that you don't want to work with them, but that you know you might not have as much time with them as you, you would want to. Um, not really. I mean, that's a little bit. The, the, the only the only thing about bar wrestling is is that, that it gets frustrating at times, and I have to actually delegate some of the work to others. Is because everybody everybody wants to work there. Everybody wants to work there. Everybody wants to work there. Everybody wants to work on every show, and I'm very excited. I think there are about only six matches in the show. Kind of get you know, because you're standing in a bar. Um, so I, don't, I just I do feel like maybe um, you know if I, if I if I don't use somebody, they might feel like I need to do it. No, but it's not the case. It's just uh, spots. So I'm a little bit worried about ta- me me accidentally rubbing talent the wrong way because I don't want that. But it's really not about uh, talent. It's about spots. Last question, where can people get the documentary? Where can they watch it? Uh, it's on a festival circuit right now. Um, and then uh, we're hoping to get some hype behind it and pitch it to a, distribu- a, a distributor, maybe a streaming service. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, guys.